Hey folks, uh, we're still at Tab, um, and this is Elk, also known as Mark, but he's known as Elk. Um, and this is his Vauxhall... Carlton. Carlton. I was going to say Belmont, but I went for Carlton. <laughs> Good work. Um, and Elk is prepping this for Retro Rides Weekender. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and he's going to show us what the hell he's done to it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell have you done to this Elk? Well, I've loaded a bit because that's standard Retro Rides business. Um, and for some reason I fitted a diesel engine out of a Vauxhall Cavalier and put an extra turbo on it. <laughs> <laughs> so this came as a petrol car, so you swapped yeah. the fuel type as well? Yeah, it was a 1.8 litre petrol, uh, the engine of which actually ended up in Jamie Arkell's car, so oh, really had it, right. if you remember that. There's a retro power connection there, and also the man behind the camera films retro power. Look yeah. at that, it's all incestuous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had this car without an engine, uh, I'm weirdly into diesels for some reason. What's wrong with you? Yeah, I know. Um, I've always been fascinated by compound diesels, and I had one of these laying around. <laughs> As you do, just had an engine laying around. I had a car without an engine, I had a turbo on a shelf, I had an intercooler from a lorry. <laughs> I thought... I had an intercooler from a lorry. <laughs> I thought, why not? <laughs> why Does not anybody else out there have an intercooler from a lorry? <laughs> no. No. Why not put it all together in one vehicle and see what happens? Is that the, the front intercooler? Iveco intercooler. Iveco intercooler. 300ZX aluminium radiator. Okay, Frankenstein engineering. Um, generic Chinese T3. Ooh, that's my head. <laughs> that's <laughs> yes, your head. <laughs> um, what else have we got that's from other cars? Mark IV Astra power steering pump that's electric, hidden oh, under the wing. Nice, nice. Uh, that you can't really see. Uh, Coilovers, I'm guessing, and not an off-the-shelf item for one of these. No, they, I had to make those. Um, so they're actually made out of a coilover conversion kit. I've shortened the shock bodies up. Mark II Cavalier dampers, uh, springs from Merlin Motorsport. I think they're 225 pounds, and I think the top mounts are S13. Yeah, they're one of those things that ends up on a lot of cars. Yeah, uh, well, they just... I, I had to oval the whole ever so slightly, mm. and then they just fit in straight in. So. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a weird amount of cars that can run S13 um, strut tops <laughs> like, everywhere you go. Like, the thing is with something like this is it's not like modifying an Escort or a Golf or something like that. Like You have to Frankenstein your stuff because there's nothing out there for it. No one is making uh, Vauxhall Khan <laughs> coilover conversion kits no. and engine swap kits with engine mounts and all that stuff. So the engine is Isuzu diesel? Isuzu, it's the 4EE1 if you want to get to 4EE1? Yeah, 1.7 litre turbo diesel, um, 82 horsepower stock. Do you know what, you've you, you made it's, a calculation? Well, it's currently on stock fueling because I want to get it through an MOT <laughs> with as minimal fuss as possible. So I need it to not have any headaches with smoking. I'm quite confident I can dial it in, but I just want to get over that hurdle first. Um, these pumps, I think it's got a 10 millimeter element in it, which means it should be able to do 200 horsepower. Ah, that, that'll get you to where you want to go. To. Yeah, and failing that, I can swap in another pump. Um, the one that looks like the best option is a 28, a pump from a Mitsubishi 28 TD from the 90s. Amazing, because that has a bigger plunger, bigger cam plate. And again, you're when modifying something in this manner, you're like looking through odd parts catalogues and looking for details of various yeah. obtuse things that might or may not be available. Well the problem with swapping pumps is you need to make sure the rotation's correct, you need, this is an IDI engine rather than a direct injection engine so you need one from an IDI otherwise all the internal pump pressures are wrong and yeah I mean I'm kind of 
you've just got chancing it anyway because technically you should go and have a pump fully rebuilt right. somewhere. <laughs> but I'm just going to throw things together and see you, what happens. This you, is basically my science experiment. You got, like I say, you're going to write down a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, a good, that's a good way to build cars. I'm liking this pipe. It's my favorite favorite feature. It looks like a bit of scaffold. It needs a bit of. Uh, I'm so, I was supposed to paint that. It's because I haven't bead rolled it. Yet, it it's so. great. <laughs> I just quite like it in the engine bay. Just sat there. <laughs> I was just, waiting to bead roll it before ob I painted ob it. Obnoxious. Just going. I'm here. What are you going to do about <laughs> it? Nothing. Um, have you driven it? Has it been anywhere yet? Driven it. We tried to take it for an MOT uh, before some paperwork issues. But um, so we have driven it. Uh, it does seem to light off the bigger turbo, so that's good. Because there was concern there that there may not be enough <laughs> airflow <laughs> to make that big turbo go at all. You just basically got a big lump in your engine bay and it's doing that. I've just wasted my time. <laughs> 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 it drives really nice, sure. but Yeah, it drives real nice. Rides better than my daily, which is obscene. Um, boosts on the big turbo, runs okay. Nothing fell off. Well, one thing fell off, but yeah. <laughs> just a grease cap. It's just a grease cap. I saw it ping off into a bush. <laughs> <laughs> I went back there a couple of days later. We can Cons find it. Considering yeah. I've touched pretty much everything on this over a period of quite a while, I was quite impressed. So you said you had paperwork issues. You were saying earlier it just disappeared off the system because it hadn't been on the road for so long. Yeah, I think the last time <laughs> it was on the road was in 1993. He couldn't log it in on the MOT computer, he couldn't find it, and then when he went to manually add it, because it had been changed from a petrol to a diesel, we wouldn't let him. So Elk had to get an updated logbook first with the diesel, and he said if we bring it back with a new logbook that matches everything about the car, he'll be able to manually add it and then you're off and running. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so he sort of got me. a pre-MOT inspection for free, which is handy, because <laughs> yeah, he started bit. looking around a few things, <laughs> um, and told us about a couple of little bits, basically. And then didn't charge us and said, bring it back when you got paperwork. Nice. No. Wasn't a complete waste of time. <laughs> just a bit of a waste of time. Just a, a small <laughs> waste of time. Um, other than the hole in the uh, wing for the exhaust, yeah. um, the rest of it's stock? Yes, um, no, basically, not, not yes. Uh, stock rear axle. Uh, it's got upgraded brakes. It's got two two discs and Cavalier SI, SRI calipers. Uh, that sort of work together, they need a bit of tweaking. Um, they're fine as they are, it yeah. just needs a slight... slight Dial of stuff in. Yeah, uh, the battery's in the back because I kind yeah. of ruined that up front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's about it really. Yeah. Oh, I've got, it's got a silly gear knob. Uh, oh, of course. Oh, yeah, you know, all show, show, cars have a silly gear knob. you want to show the gilly, silly gear knob? The gilly seal. The gilly seal. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we have in here? Uh, you got a gear knob off a joystick. <laughs> this yeah. looks like a, this looks like a Kempston Pro. That needs tightening up. I got that from a um, from a that, that was super nice and tight, but it's not quite man enough to hold the strength of shifting it like that. So I kind of have to shift down here now. Does the button I'm, do anything? Sadly, not at the moment. No. I do want to wire it up to something. I can wire it up to this. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Cool. Sleeper-ish. Sleeper-ish. Yeah. It's, it's low. It's a very silence. low. <laughs> That needs to be fast, obviously. It will be, like, it's just <laughs> running in, isn't it? Once you well, you're going to have all of the torques. Once you turn the boost up, it'll be fine. Yeah, so you're going to have all the torques because diesel, oh, and then you've got turbos on it. So. And then I'll have a nice gearbox with a pole puddle of swarf in it. <laughs> <laughs> and if the gearbox survives, he'll then have a nice diff yeah. puddle of swarf in it. <laughs> or a clutch right. that's just dust. Just, uh, just work your way through. Until okay, you work your way through the pole until everything is uh, upgraded. Ru ruined. And then you're staring at... Uh, can't and you spent a small fortune on to get diesel in. <laughs> Brilliant. Not spent much on it. Nah, it's all bits you're adding. Yeah. Bits of engineering. I bought the radiator specifically for it because I wanted the biggest one that would fit the space. Uh, but that was like eighty pounds. <laughs> Vbay. <laughs> <That's laughs> <a, laughs> um, two hundred six. Uh, three hundred six. Three hundred six. It's gone, gone for the big boy. I love it. Yeah. This is this nestles is. nicely in the Scania intercooler. I just uh, I love this kind of stuff. This is proper retro rides nonsense. Oh yeah, the fans from an Amiga V6. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what you happen to have. Yeah. I always liked it when you see in a magazine that have like the side columns of the parts. Yeah. And like sometimes you'd get like one and it was just every single different maker car you could think of was just yeah. in there somewhere. It's like, yep, that's somebody that's 
A, done this on a budget, and B, had to think about a lot of things and oh, do quite a lot of measuring. The, yeah, there's, there was, getting an alternator in there was quite a challenge because there's about three millimetres between the back <laughs> of the alternator and the engine mount. So that alternator is actually half RX-8, half Subaru Forester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got, you got parts within parts. Yeah, it's, it's a hybrid. <laughs> hybrid alternator. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need to see his starting arrangement. The starting arrangement is quite interesting. <laughs> should, uh, we, we should show that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> T- talk, it, talk us through the uh, <laughs> the starting fix. process here, Rock. Um, okay. Well, you switch your little vent on there, and then well, you have to. You only have to spray whilst you're uh, whilst you're cranking. Otherwise, so, so you're spraying starter into the engine because yeah, to increase the compression that's piped directly into the inlet manifold you took off your glow plugs yeah i've got no glow plugs because well it was to decrease the compression ratio <laughs> so that my peak cylinder pressures didn't cause an instant head gasket failure slash engineering uh, head coming through the bonnet slash something else so because i'm planning on running a reasonable amount of boost of it i mean i've probably got way more air than the amount of fuel i can give it at the moment so i'm going to be pump limited on this setup hopefully unless that tiny original turbo just strangles it, which is a possibility. But it's, it's an experiment. My problem is, is I always, if I plan something, I want it to be perfect. And then it never happens, because I'm busy planning it to make it perfect. <laughs> yeah. And I want every detail to be perfect, and the project just never even starts. So on this one, I thought, just stop thinking, and just start welding and bolting stuff That's to things. That's good advice. And see what Genuinely happens. good advice. <laughs> And you're fixing as you go, pretty much. Yeah, I this is a solution to a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We we have got some other thoughts to help it start a little easier, but it's only ever really meant to be a summer car rather than a winter car. Yeah. 